Hello, this is Ms. Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss isomers and cycloalkanes. Today's essential question, how are structural isomers determined? Isomers. An isomer is when you have two molecules or more with the same molecular formula, but a different structural formula. And a hydrocarbon with four or more carbons can have isomers. So let's just, I'm not going to show you all the isomers, but let's say we had C4, H10, so we could have the basic, one, two, three, four, so that's one that's one example of a, C, uh, a structure that's C4H10. But we could also have something like, I gotta erase this. That's another example of a structure containing four carbons, 10 hydrogens, um, but they're completely different structures with different names. So the name of this guy would be butane, and the name of this guy here would be, ooh, not much room, to methyl propane. Okay, so two completely different structures, but with the same molecular formula. That's an isomer. So, to determine the structure of isomers for a hydrocarbon, um, what you want to do is remove one carbon from the main chain and connect it to the second carbon in the new chain, then arrange the hydrogens. Continue moving carbons and removing carbons and re-adding them until you have all the possible isomers. So um, we'll try a few of these together. So we have C5H12. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, with a whole bunch of H's. So that's one structure. And that's, that's uh, C5H12. So now what we're going to do is basically rewrite this again, but removing that carbon. So now we have four carbons. And we need to place the, the fifth carbon somewhere. We can't place it here because that's still the same chain, right? What we can do, though, is we can place them here. And I'm going to be lazy and not draw all of the hydrogens this time. So that is a completely different structure. Now let's see. If we then move this carbon over one more, would that work? Is this a different structure than this? Well, this, this guy here would be 1,2,2-methyl-butane, and this guy here would be 1,2,2-methyl-butane. So that one doesn't work. Okay, so the next thing we would do is draw this structure again, but removing another carbon. So now we have three carbons, one here, and I guess we can put the next one here, and so forth. So this is another, these are all structures of C5H12, um, but they're completely different structurally, but they have the same molecular formula. All right, on to ring structures. Carbon can form molecules in straight lines or in rings. If the molecule is in, the, in a ring, it has the prefix cyclo. Um, when numbering carbons, when we're talking about the parent chain, which is the ring, 
you're gonna start with the carbon that has the branch. So if there is a branch, it will always be, at least if there's only one branch, it'll be on carbon number one. If there's multiple branches, one of them will be on carbon number one. All right, so let's try an example of an alkane ring or a cycloalkane. So, we'll do this guy here, and each one is going to be connected to two hydrogens. All right, so we got that guy there. So just like we did with the straight chain alkanes, count the number of carbons in the parent chain. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, right? We have five carbons. So the prefix for five is pent, all single bonds, so it's a pentane. However, it's a ring, right? So we have to add the prefix cyclo. So this guy will be cyclopentane. Not too bad. All right, let's try another one. Um, this time we'll have a ring with six carbons. And let's put a branch on here. And how about another branch? All right. So we have a six carbon ring and the um, prefix for six is hex. It's um, all single bonds, which makes it a hexane. It's in a ring, so it's going to be cyclohexane. Okay. This time, because we have branches, we have to number the carbons. And remember, we're going to number the carbons starting with the first branch. So wherever the first branch is, that's got to be carbon number one. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we'll name this guy here. This, this branch has one carbon, and he's on the number one carbon, so he's one Meth for one carbon, it's a branch, so it's a methyl. And this branch here also has one carbon. He's on carbon number three, he's also a meth. And a branch which makes him a methyl. So the final name of this guy is one comma three, not methyl methyl. We've got two methyls, so instead of methyl methyl, it's di methyl cyclohexane 1 3 dimethyl cyclohexane so that's how you name cycloalkanes that's it for today have a good one